And now, it's time for TJ Wow. Good morning, everybody. Really glad to see you all here. And it is a cold, cold day out there. All of you are saying, doesn't matter where in the country you are in the UK or even abroad, it is chilly. It is absolutely freezing. And Jane, you've just said it's minus four in Surrey. I'm in Surrey as well. And believe me, I'm not going outside right now. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming along on this crisp, chilly winter day. Uh, and Olivia says, greetings from a pure white snowy Sweden. So Olivia, you probably beat us in terms of how cold it is. Welcome, Olivia. This is me. I'm your, the deputy editor of Training Journal. This was a picture of me at the TJ Awards that was last week. An epic event, it must be said. Sadly, I didn't win that um, trophy there, but I was presenting that on stage. So it was a great celebration of success, and we hope to share some more of those stories in the magazine website and on our TJ Wow discussion website webinars in the future. Uh, so what is the format of our discussion webinars? You probably know this already, but if you are new, it's all about conversation. The late, great Jay Cross said it's the most powerful learning technology ever invented. And the way that we approach the training journal discussion webinars is there's no PowerPoint presentations from people. There's no sage on the stage. It's about all of us, you guys, our speakers and me all getting together and having a chat. It's the best part of any kind of conference. It's when you have a chat over a coffee during the break, or as I always say, quite frankly, in the pub. So you can use that chat window with everybody, just like you are now. Do share where you are, what you want, and your thoughts on our topics. You've also got a question and answer panel. If you want to absolutely make sure that I see your question, pop it in the Q&A panel. I will see it, I promise. I will get there as, as much as we can. Um, but use that if you've got a specific question. Also, we're on Twitter. Our editor of online, John Kennard, will be doing a great job on Twitter. You can use hash TJ. Wow to join in the conversation. Share a few nuggets with other people, especially because this subject is all about social media. So it's a really great idea to do that. You know everything's recorded. You know it's available publicly. It's on the Training Journal website. And this one will be available very shortly as well for you to go and share with people. Oh, I think that's enough of all that. Let's see who our speakers are today. We have the lovely Fiona, the lovely Stephanie, the lovely Margaret. Three wonderful L&D ladies, all here to talk about how we can use social media in learning. Let's get their videos on screen. Here they come. Uh, they've been waiting in the wings very quietly. And uh, I'm going to get their videos here so that you can see it all. This is the normal format that we use in our training journal webinars. And today's question that we are discussing is uh, our starting point is our, no, that's not our starting point. I've got the wrong question. Scrap that. That's not it. I thought I'd copied and pasted the right one. You see, fail right at the very beginning of the session. So at least if I fail, then nobody else has anything to worry about. That's the proper question. Uh, the proper question we are discussing today is how can we use social media to support learning? Uh, so hopefully nobody had a heart attack thinking that I'd asked them the wrong question. Okay, so let's have a <laughs> few second. Yeah, I was just really worrying about that. Let's have some introductions from our speakers. We'll go to Margaret, Fiona, and then Stephanie. Margaret, uh, just tell us just a little bit about who you are and what you do. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Margaret. I'm the director at Cake People Development, sitting in the office right now with the team being very quiet around me. <laughs> and uh, I've been involved in learning and development for over 30 years. Quite scary. A lot of change in that time. Um, I'm particularly interesting in the last 10 years or so when I've been quite active on social media. So I think in January it will be 10 years on Twitter probably about 11 or 12 years on LinkedIn, and it's probably been the biggest aspect of my learning over those 30-odd years in learning and development, and look forward to sharing more with you later. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Margaret. So let's come to Fiona next. Fiona, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do as well. Ooh, let's, let's just um, pause there a second, Fiona. Your sound isn't coming out very well. We did test this all beforehand, and it was fine, but don't panic, don't panic. So, Margaret, let's get you muted just to see if that's sure. uh, a problem. Thank you, Margaret. 
Oh, now we've got some other stuff going on. I know what this is. This is our lovely attendees. It's wonderful that you want to get involved, guys. But let me just mute someone. So, Fiona, let's try that again. Okay, can you okay yes. now? Yes. Yay, awesome. Okay, so hello again. Yes, I'm Fiona. I'm a freelance learning and development consultant. I've um, been working in L&D for, gosh, I haven't even worked out the numbers. I like Margaret's stats there on her specifics. Quite a while. Um, I was really excited um, that you asked me to join you today, so thank you very much. I absolutely love social media. I love it personally for my own learning, plus I love bringing it into learning design that I do with my class, so I'm really looking forward to talking about that. Brilliant. Thank you, Fiona. And I love that you love social media. Maybe I should have invited someone who doesn't just for a little bit of balance. But anyway, that wouldn't have made for a very interesting conversation. And, and Stephanie, let's hear a little bit from you about what it is that you do. And Stephanie, we just need to remember to unmute you. Got it. You know the you know the drill. I was captivated by Fiona and was engrossed and forgot to turn, but unmute myself. Hi everybody. Um, I'm Stephanie Morgan. I'm director of learning solutions at Brayleno Learning, and we design and deliver blended learning solutions. So um, including um, social media into the blends is really important to us. Um, I probably started on Twitter about. Five years ago, maybe I'm a bit late to this party, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I absolutely love it. Um, it's a bit creepy when I stalk people. So I met someone in Training Journal Awards this week and said, are you Michelle? I'm stalking you on Twitter. <laughs> she coped reasonably well with it, to be fair to her. But I absolutely love it. You meet people you couldn't possibly meet in real life, and you get to know them so quickly. I mean, it's from network, and it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm a bit of an evangelist, I think. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So ladies, we've had a bit of an introduction there about what the ladies do and also what they think of social media and what they've been using. Now, I'm really interested to also know what you guys think as well. So, so pop something in the chat window and uh, we'll go from there. Now, Gail, Gail Elvidge, you've put your hand up. If you wanted to say something, Gail, more than welcome to. You just need to click the microphone at the top left of the screen. If you're thinking, oh, no, that's not what I meant, then no problem. You can just click that hand up icon again, and it will go down out of the way. So if it was a complete experiment, you're more than welcome. No problem there as well at all. Um, and, uh, and so, Rebecca, you say you're just starting to get to grips with it. Oh, and John said, let's talk about the poll. I'd forgotten about that poll, John. Uh, so we did a poll. Now, John, you're going to have to remind me about this because it was a couple of weeks ago that I looked at that. So, John, you mentioned that in the chat window, and I'll come back to it. Uh, so Mike says, I can really see the power in uh, SM, social media, for multiple applications. So, Mike, tell us about that in terms of multiple applications about what that means. Uh, Kath says, I'm really enjoying using it. Still have a bit of a social media lurker. Oh, so Kath, maybe you're following Stephanie's lead on that one. Uh, David says, we love social media and have our own L&D Twitter feed. We use it to update our learners on what's happening in the industry, what we're doing, motivational info, and anything we think will be useful. We have 2,150 followers, so we're happy doing the right thing. Excellent. Mike is expanding by saying networking, marketing, self-learning, etc. Brilliant. Okay, so I'll come back to the uh, the poll that we did on Training Journal's Twitter feed in a moment. So we've got some really good stuff here that people are saying this is how we use it. Um, now let's come to Fiona first, because Fiona, you talked about using this with your with your learners and kind of in the design of your programs. And David Bedlow is saying that actually they're using it to update their learners. Is that the kind of thing that you've done or something different? Um, yeah, that what I like about um, social is that it just really adds value, it adds another layer to the learning. So what, how I've used it, how I've incorporated it, um, is to keep the conversation going between, say, workshops or before workshops or after workshops. And it helps to just really broaden, I think, the perspectives of the learners. And it helps to get different views and opinions. 
And actually, quite interestingly, Joe, like you said, you could have had somebody on this panel today that didn't agree or didn't see value in it, because we can still learn from that. So that just adds another layer of perspective and idea and helps to challenge um, our thinking, I think, around good learning. Brilliant. And I think also challenging our perspectives in any way is really good. I was chatting to somebody at Online Educa Berlin last week, and we've recorded a TJ podcast with this lady, and she was saying that she uses art in knowledge management training. And I was thinking, okay, that's interesting, and they, they make art, and they do abstract art. And it was all about thinking differently. And at first, I was thinking, how, how can that work? But when she explained it, it was really good. So that's interesting. So Stephanie, let's come to you on this point. You know, do you use this as part of your learning design? Is it more for your own learning? How are you using this you know, professionally? Very slow off the unmuting <laughs> mark today. Bit, you need more coffee. Bit frozen, I think. coffee. <laughs> uh, in both ways, really. It started more for my own um, professional development, certainly. Um, but um, I agree with Fiona. It really does help um, enrich the learning experience if you can include it in it. And I think it's also a good. Um, way to engage people in learning before you even start with what it is you want to, um, what learning you want people to acquire. So setting them some tasks to investigate socially, I think is a really good way to include social media in your mix, really. And what kind of benefits have come out of that? What have people said back to you about that? Well. I've been in learning development a long time, and Braylena Learning has been going for 20 years. So we work with quite a lot of organizations who are used to perhaps being a bit of a passive participant in learning. And I think um, including social media in the mix helps them be more active learners. Um, and it hooks them in quicker. So they go off on their own little journeys. So you set them on one track. They go on quite a few detours, but when they come back, they, they've got much more to say. They're much more involved in it, and they are owning it. So I think um, that makes a big difference. Brilliant. I really like that. And Margaret, you're nodding away there. So what's your experience of I, I think you know, how have you done this I've in the I started with my own learning and really appreciated particularly the L&D coaching community, how people are very prepared to share articles they found useful or links to resources, which has developed into meeting people and then attending events and learning from those events through to using it more with our learners. Uh, particularly, we, we have a coaching conference that, that runs every year, and we find it a really useful way to get interaction as Stephanie says, before the event, around the event, and after the event to share content, ideas, um, but particularly to bring people in from outside the event. So we might throw some stuff out there, and then people will comment, ask questions, and bring in questions in from those who aren't at the event. Um, but also, um, the OEB event you were at last week, etc., following hashtags for events almost feels like you're there. Not quite. You don't get the coffee and the cakes and all the other bits, but um, it's really, really good to be able to pick up the ideas and the main themes and often see copies of the, the slides and photographs of the event. So um, yeah, I probably spend too much time on social media because there's just so much learning and, and fundamentally I love learning. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I, I, I think that myself sometimes. It's just like it gets to 4 o'clock and you go, have I done any real work today? But then that, that brings up an interesting point about, you know, is social media part of our real work? And I, I think arguably we're all going to say yes. Uh, so let's have a look at what we've got in the chat window. Now, John, our editor of online, uh, what he did is he put out a social media, he put a tweet out with a poll in it. So if you've never done that before, that's a thing that you can do. You can put a poll to ask questions. Uh, the question we asked was, can you support learning with social media? There are various answers, basically yes, no, and, and otherwise. Uh, and 31 people answered, and so they all said yes. Um, and that's great. And we kind of go, yay, evidence small sample and we were doing it on social media so you know we're preaching to the converted is the phrase that John used but you know it's really nice that people are saying in this medium we can use it for learning not just for networking or what I had for breakfast 
Now, Rebecca makes a really interesting point here. She says, I think there's an assumption that a lot of people already know how to use the technologies. I was really frustrated that I never seemed to be able to reply to a tweet. And it was only once I had to start training people on our workplace that I learned how to actually do that. Something so simple, but if you can't do the basics, it can get frustrating. Really important point. Let's come to Stephanie on this one first. Do you, do you remember first being on Twitter? Do you remember struggling at all, Stephanie, or with other social media? Other social media tools are available. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm very, very lucky. I've got um, young, not young children, but I've grown up children, really, who um, are like my own little um, training department. So still, uh, Stories has been my latest um, experiment on Instagram. And I had to get my daughter to show me how to do that, basically. But there are millions of young people out there. They're always happy to help. So I think anything that you don't know around social media, you can really, really find someone um, who can help you quite quickly. Yeah, and there's lots of guides on the internet. You can go and Google something. It's, it's having those basic digital skills, though, I think is a little bit challenging. Fiona, you're nodding there as well. Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't tell. Yeah, I um, think I so. was reading the chat box. I'm getting distracted. I was listening to you, Stephanie, but there's some really <laughs> good comments. Okay, sorry, apologise. Um, so, what was the question again? <laughs> uh, so we we're just talking about um, the basic digital skills that we need to get started. Because not it, people. Um, Rebecca was saying it's an assumption that we all have those skills. Thank you. Sorry, because uh, there's been some really good comments around that in there. And one thing I noted was that somebody said they started off by lurking. So I think um, the beautiful thing about social media is that you can interact with it as much or as little as you like. And actually, what I think is really important is that you see the value in it. So you don't, I don't, I wouldn't ever say people have to go in and interact with everything. It's okay to take your time. And it's okay to lurk, and it's okay just to watch and see what other people are doing. Um, and that's, yeah, that's an okay thing. And then as you get confident, or if you find one space is like it's adding more value than another, then spend a little bit more time in that, rather than feeling like you have to be everywhere on everything. That would be, yeah, that's where I was going. Mm. So I'd, I'd just um, like to add to that, because... Lots of people don't immediately see the value of it. They feel like they're being bombarded with information. And I think um, having some objectives of your own before you start on any of the platforms can help focus you when there's so, so much information there. So if you just turn it on, it's, or it's, it's a bit like having the remote control in your hand and just scrolling through all the channels. If you haven't really got an idea of what you want from it, you could keep doing that all day, couldn't you, until something takes your fancy. Um, so having an objective. I'm just, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've really noticed David's but comment about go, go ahead, about go ahead. age too. Um, and, you know, in my mid-50s, I don't mind sharing that um, quite a lot of my colleagues are surprised at how much I'm involved in social media and have been for, for quite a number of years. Um, I don't think age is a barrier. In fact, I think uh, it helps um, because we've all been involved in social learning in various ways through the years. And this is just a slightly different technology, perhaps. I mean, in the early days, it was forums. Then I got involved in Q&A, in LinkedIn and groups. And it's just really evolved over time. But it was important to me, and I think um, Stephanie's point is so right, with, with a, a now an 18-year-old son, he actually first got me on Twitter. He set up my account, did everything for me. Um, so keeping in touch and keeping open has really helped me tune in to what the issues are um, across L&D of all ages, all generations. And so I really don't want to stop learning. So I don't think age is, is a barrier. And I totally agree that with David that people assume that it's a young person's thing. I don't believe that. That's great. Thank you, Margaret, for really kind of breaking down those barriers there. So we have a question that's come through the Q&A box. Thank you very much to Sarah Stocks. So, Stephanie, let me come to you on this one first, because Sarah says, 
Thanks, Stephanie. Good point. How have you guys engaged people? Sorry. How have you guys engaged with people to see the value of the tool? So how have we taken people on a journey from maybe not using it very much or not having accounts on various platforms to seeing the value of it? Stephanie. Well, um, I did it on purpose, if that's um, the right way of saying it. So um, when I first started my journey and started to realize that as a business, we needed to be more visible on social media and to um, really engage with, with our clients and potential clients, then um, I wanted all of the team to get involved and they were not keen at all. And part of that was about um, being visible. So I think the biggest barrier um, I have found with people in my team is that they're frightened of what people might think of them and what they might do and whether they'll get it wrong. So um, I almost slowed down in order to speed up. So I took the time to sit with people, understand what their concerns were, help them to get boundaries to themselves, help them to take baby steps and really try and find out what, work, what was of interest to each one of them individually. So um, as a result of that, we sort of had a, um, a focus each. So um, obviously our digital team had certain areas of digital that they were interested in and they, they started with that first. They started to stick to what they know and what they're really passionate about because it sort of drives their journey and then they were, once they got comfortable with that in their own area, they were able to branch out a bit more. Thank you. And Fiona, similar question to you. How have you helped people see the value of those tools? Um, so I think there's something, I like that it's the connecting personally piece. So I completely agree with Stephanie there. Um, so often I'll start by asking them how they use social media or how they use technology to learn things at, at home in their personal space. So I kind of forget about work for a minute. And then people will say things like, oh, I watched this really good YouTube video. It showed me how to rewire a plug. Or I, sh I watched a YouTube video to learn how to crochet. Or, you know, and I read blogs on, I don't know, is it mum's net? You know, things like, you know, where people, they go out, don't they, and they search to help them at home with stuff. So we explored that a bit and then got them to then think about that. And I kind of highlighted that, well, you're learning through technology. You're learning through social media. And then get them to think, so how could could we learn? How can we apply that in the workplace? So we're saying we might wait to go on a course, or we're saying we might wait to get a mentor um, to meet face to face. Why aren't we actually jumping on to Twitter or LinkedIn and asking a question um, and getting help in that way? Does that make sense? Hmm, interesting. Thank you, Fiona. If it doesn't make sense, I'm sure people in the chat window will let us know. Uh, so we've got some more questions coming through thick and fast. So let's see if we can come to these. So Margaret, let's come to you first on this next question. So this is from uh, Gail Elvidge. Gail, thank you very much for popping this in the Q&A pod. Gail asks, does anyone link a social aspect to a specific course content rather than just general social networking? For example, do you link a chat room to a specific course so that attendees can continue the conversation after the Great course? Great question. So yes. Margaret, what's your thoughts um, on that one first of all? And then we'll go level to seven Stephanie. strategic leadership program yeah. and the group meet every two months for four modules. And in between we use Slack. So I'm not sure how many people are aware of Slack as a tool. It's a free collaboration tool and it's a closed group and we invite them to talk to each other between the sessions. So, for example, in the first module, they have to prepare their vision for their part of the organization. So we're talking senior people, directors, and they will be encouraged to, using Slack, share their thoughts so far, or how does this sound, guys? I'm working on this, and here's what I did. I went back and I did this with my team and I got this response. So we also share all the content. So if we've used any PowerPoint slides, which are likely to be minimal, we will then share them afterwards so they have a real purpose. It may help that it's an accredited program and they do have to complete assignments. So what happens is the Slack space 
builds a fantastic resource for them to go back to again and again um, through the program and beyond. We've now just invested in our own digital learning platform, which will have all of those features and more. So we're now opening up our groups to alumni of previous groups, so they're part of a wider network. And we constantly update with articles and ask questions around that. So very much linked to specific programs. Um, recently, we were supporting a very large organization with its top 60 senior managers on a, an event to sort of kickstart 2018. And we started it with a social media space first. So about a week before, I asked them to watch some videos, start talking to each other, introducing themselves. By the time we were in the room, they were already warmed up and familiar with and aware of the content. So a number of programs now, we are specifically linking, if you like, providing a more blended approach, which I know Stephanie's got some sharing to do around as well. So very much building that. But we're encouraging other social media, so not just the closed group, but encouraging people to go and search for the answers to questions via Twitter, etc. So yeah, a number of ways we incorporate it and encourage it through programs. Brilliant. Thank you, Margaret, for sharing. Now, I've certainly used it a few times in with clients that I've worked with in, this, in different ways before, during, and after, and that could be a, a LinkedIn group LinkedIn groups I've used in other social networks and, and and it really hasn't worked at all because the LinkedIn groups I don't think are designed very well, the notifications don't come through well, so I must admit I'm not using um, Well, similar to Margaret and some of the things that you said, Joe. so we, we look to try and find out what the learners preferred um, platform is really so some of the apps are really good um, actually we have used LinkedIn to some success and um, especially if you can download the LinkedIn groups app then that's much much more helpful than waiting for the notifications etc etc and uh, we've used it in the same way as Margaret to warm people up beforehand to continue the conversation during but also for some of those um, programs where it is harder perhaps to continue to apply the learning after the event. So I'm thinking of things like resilience, where you might go um, on an event that takes a number of modules, but if you really want to improve your resilience, then you need to be quite committed to that. So keeping that conversation going long after the face-to-face -face, um, or any other part of the event has happened is a really good way to keep people motivated and to keep them sharing their journey about um, what is challenging them, especially in terms of resilience and getting support from the group. And actually, as I say, we've used LinkedIn groups for that quite successfully. But all of the others are really good and it, it depends really on your audience. So if people haven't got uh, the technology, then LinkedIn's quite good if they're using de desktops. Yeah, that's a really great point about the different platforms, the different technology, um, and, and there's a lot of conversation going on about this in the chat window about the different platforms, about what people like about them. Um, so, you know, if you've never seen Slack, if you've never come across, so I haven't come across Microsoft Teams, which Kath Monaghan had kind of mentioned, and she said it's similar to Yammer, which I have used, which if you've used LinkedIn or Facebook, it's got that similar functionality of chat and groups and, and sharing and, and so on and so forth. So there's, there's a lot of similarities across the platforms, but also there is some uniqueness about how people use them. Um, we get to the IT issue, as we always do, where some people are saying, oh, this is blocked in my area, we can't use this or we haven't subscribed to such and such but people are also sharing what they really like so Harry uh, says WhatsApp is great my partner works for a national copper uh, they have WhatsApp groups between trainers and trainees to provide a constant go-to area where they can get help it's been so enlightening for my partner as a trainer of where the gaps are uh, where the gaps are in training lies. That's really great. Thank you for sharing that, Harry. Um, a question I want to move on to. I've got some other things that I, I have picked up from the chat. I am going to come back to, I promise. And um, who asked this question? This was David Bedlow. David, thank you very much for your question in the Q&A pod. He says, we do this for our academy, which is our version of an apprentice scheme. They have their own Twitter feed, a separate 
to the LND one. So, so on Twitter specifically, you know, as with all these different things, there's different ways of working. We've got terminology, things like hashtags. Fiona, let's come to you on that one. What do you see as the benefit of Twitter specifically? So I love Twitter, so thank you for asking me that question. Um, I think that you can do a lot with it to really um, enhance the learning experience and like um, as it said, um, David shared, you can have maybe your corporate Twitter feed and you can have an L&D team Twitter feed, but you can use things like hashtags to keep a conversation going around something really specific. So if it's a manager's program, leader's program, um, you can engage with the delegates and, again, keep the conversation going and to, um, again, invite other ideas from just the world, essentially, isn't it? Because um, a hashtag, if you use a hashtag and your tweets and your Twitter account is open, then anyone potentially can find that and respond to it. And I think that, again, really just adds that um, extra layer of difference of opinion and diversity to, into the learning. Um, and you can make up hashtags and you can um, have them written however you like. So you can really make that specific to the learning experience that you have with your group. And even better, get the learners to almost design that and think about that and think about what they want it to be called and how often they want to um, engage with it. And, and just sharing, I suppose, and working with um, so using social media, if you've got people who have a number of different followers, asking the hashtag to be shared and asking it to go wider than your, um, your smaller delegates is really good to get a real difference of opinion. Thanks, Fiona. I think it's really good that you're bringing in kind of those different opinions and also broadening it out is really interesting. So uh, we've mentioned Online Educa Berlin, the conference last week. So John, um, editor of Online, and I were there. We did about a million tweets, something like that, maybe a million and a half. And it was really interesting to see, you know, people retweet something and think, oh, that's an interesting kind of learning nugget or a photo or a quote from someone. But also people get involved. They develop the argument. They kind of, or they argue, they kind of go, somebody said that's a really bad example Joe you know you can't say that um, and and then Charles Jennings got involved and going well no it's not it's because of this and this and a whole discussion happens from that which is really good uh, so and John has said of the tweets definitely 1.5 million yeah we I mean, saw thumbs by the end of that uh, let's it come to this question next from Lynn so Lynn uh, we're going to answer your question. We'll go to Stephanie first and then Margaret on this one. Lynn says, do you have any top tips for encouraging people to add to the conversation on Facebook Workplace? If you haven't used that, it's a version of Facebook but specifically for work. Um, so trying to remove all of the kind of the personal element of that in, in the sense of just sharing pictures of your cats or whatever it might be. Uh, Lynn says, it sometimes feel as though just a small group of people post and everyone else feels a bit reticent. So let's broaden that out to communities more generally, because it could be Slack, it could be Yammer, it could be Jive, it could, it could be whatever you're using. So Stephanie, what are your top tips for encouraging people to add to the conversation? Well, personally, I think you need to look at it as, a, a, as a, an objective to be achieved. So you need a plan of action for it. And I think there's a few things that you definitely need to do. So you need to find some um, champions or ambassadors, call them what you will, and you need to um, engage them and ask them to take a more active part in the process. And the more visible they are in the business, so there's often key influencers in the business, and if people know that they're involved, then that has um, much more leverage than, than maybe the people who are already talking in the group. So um, you need to look at it more as an engagement piece, I think, in the early stages. Once it reaches a tipping point, it is self-perpetuating. But if nobody's in there and hardly anybody's saying anything, then every time people have a peek, they think, well, what's the point? So you really need to engage some core people, but also some additional people. And that might be ringing around people to say, in half an hour, I'm going to post something in there, and will you, or emailing them, will you all please make a comment? This is what I'm going to say, and really um, 
prepping them for it because people especially in an organization I think when they feel again back to that being judged thing they need a little bit of time to compose themselves and decide what to say and maybe you need to do a little bit of um, workshops with people just to get them to write things quickly to ha have an opinion piece um, this is a bit random but I often mention Toastmasters I don't know if any of you know about Toastmasters it's um, a voluntary group where you can learn, uh, per perfect your public speaking skills and one of the things they do there is a thing called table topics now at table topics you volunteer and you don't know until you get on the stage what the topic is and then you have to speak about it for one minute and that is really difficult but I think that is a definite life and work skill having someone throw something at you and being able to have an opinion on it so I think Doing table topics for social media is a really good idea. A bit mad, I know it's a bit mad, but this is the analogy that I think works for me. Uh, because people feel under pressure, don't they? They can't, they can't respond that quickly. I think you make a great point there because I mean, it's similar on, on Twitter and other social media platforms is it can feel very instant and it can feel like you must respond now. There's a, a Twitter conversation going on at the moment that started I think yesterday uh, and I was tagged in on it for my opinion. I haven't responded yet and there's part of me going, oh, I haven't responded, I must respond. But there's also part of me that wanted to sit back and think, well, actually, what do I think about this? I, I don't want to respond too quickly. I want to consider it and then have a considered response to it. Um, Olivia says, a perspective. I am taking a course privately in which I have the opportunity to be active on social media. There is a large active group, and I must say, I learn a lot just from following, even when I do not add anything myself for days. And that's a really great point, Olivia. Is uh, And John's makes the, the point as well, there's a 99 uh, 99 one ratio of kind of like most people will watch some will comment and some will create and that's kind of that's a large kind of model or, or sort of format that we use across communities um, and Olivia says exactly my point I'm not reading out that Queen Joe bit I, I will have my crown next time um, <laughs> I am reflective and often the chat is just too quick for me yeah and it is a good it's one of those things as Stephanie says it can be really good to develop that skill to go right I am going to respond and add something it doesn't have to be I'm an expert in sharing something it could be a question that I'm just adding to the conversation or just telling somebody you've got a great point and I got value from it that's a really great way to dip yeah, your toe into point. that water um, I was also going to add yeah, to um, that for the reflectors it's helpful to those of us who are not reflectors to have that reflection shared so summarizing what your picking up from it from a conversation is, is really valid and back to the people who are saying that they um, get a lot from observing what other people say in you other people get a lot from your reflections as well so you don't be, need to be necessarily yeah. adding something new you can be drawing conclusions or pulling information together and that's equally valid um, and but there's a difference I think from the wider networks to smaller communities because if we all sit back and watch a small community, then we're sitting back and watching absolutely nothing. So if you're in a very small work-based type community, then for all of us to get value from it, then we all have to play our part in it. And it's um, something that if you could dip your toe in the water, then other people will join you. Um, Yeah, definitely, and I think there are different ways of doing it as well. I know at Good Practice they have a Slack channel, and they had one particular Slack channel or kind of you know, conversation area, if you like, or group, that was to discuss Game of Thrones. Um, so, you know, Monday morning, whatever it was, the Slack channel was alive discussing this. That wasn't work-related, but it kept the conversation in a particular place. And if somebody's getting involved with whatever that topic might be, they might then be more comfortable getting involved with more um, more other kind of conversations as well. Uh, John's take his last job had a, a Game of Thrones Slack channel as well. 
So, so let's come back to this uh, to this point about kind of the community and getting people involved. Now, Rebecca Bradshaw in the chat a little bit earlier on made a great point. She said, picking up a point that Margaret made, as training professionals, we also need to change our approach in that we also need to be quite heavily involved, starting the questions. Again, it can't assume a participant will start the conversation. That brings the challenges of time that it takes to support chat functions. And absolutely, that made sense, Rebecca, because it does take time. I'm starting to build a community for my work outside of TJ. And you know, I've got to put aside hours every week to be able to manage it, promote it, work through it, get people encouraged. It um, does take time. Something I've noticed so Margaret, on this point of time, on this point of getting people involved, maybe seven, eight years ago I was quite that? frustrated that people couldn't see the value and weren't getting involved. I think as more people have got used to using Facebook, Instagram and a whole range of things socially, they're more comfortable with getting involved in professional social media networks. Not very familiar with the Facebook one. Um, I had a little look at it, but we generally don't find many of our contacts are on Facebook. But with a number of the groups that we operate, it takes a little while to get people started. And I think it's a bit of experimenting, a um, bit like the Game of Thrones thing. Sometimes it's the most surprising question or comment that can trigger a conversation and get people feeling more comfortable with getting involved. So I agree that it needs thinking about, that it needs the facilitator to prompt. With the group I mentioned earlier, um, over 60 people, we did a couple of little teasers and put out a bit of a competition. There was a particular symbol of the program and we asked people what might this mean and we had some really creative responses and there was going to be a prize for a winner. And actually, somebody created the most amazing poem as their response, and they won, and we invited them up onto stage at the face-to-face -face event. So by getting people to have a reason to get involved, a purpose to get involved, and then eventually I noticed that people start having their own conversations and need less input. Um, but yeah, it does take a bit of work. It does take a bit of thinking about. And it really is asking questions that really pique interest, that get people thinking, yeah, I've been wondering that. Um, and you've just got to experiment and try and notice what people respond to. It's not always the ones that you want them to respond to or you hope they'll respond to. And they can be something like Game of Thrones or something that's happening in the news that can get people fired up. But I think it's encouraging champions, as Stephanie talked about as well. It's getting other people to be ready to get involved, to prime people. And a couple of other things, really. One, I have noticed that if it's blended and you have face-to-face -face time with the group, you may notice that your more introverted people in the group enjoy the social media because that's their way to reflect, to think about their answers and get involved without having to do it there in the room with other people. So I've noticed that they may find it more useful place to get involved in the learning. And the other thing is, relax. Some people don't get it. Some people are not interested in participating that way. They prefer IRL, you know, being in real life and talking to people, but actually they may be lurking, they may be reading, they may be downloading resources, but they really aren't into social media chat. So it won't be for everyone. Don't worry about it. The right people will be there joining in the conversations. Yeah, absolutely agree with that, Margaret. Thank you. And, and Fiona, I think you've got a quick comment on this one as well. I'm sitting here listening and I'm also thinking, you know, we kind of grow up knowing how to engage socially in groups and in communities. That's kind of our learning. It happens, doesn't it? We watch other people. And I just wonder if we're not quite there yet with people automatically knowing how to engage and how to um, respond within a community. So sometimes just maybe setting the scene or agreeing with the group about what it's there for and how they can engage with it and getting them to, to agree that is really important. That might help go from lurking into the engagement. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, and actually, I've just tried to give a little bit of encouragement. If you're lurking today, if you haven't said much in the chat, please do. You're more than welcome, even if it's just 
I'm enjoying this or I'm learning something. That's all really good. And also, it would be really good to see maybe you tweet something. So we've got hash TJ Wow. So all you have to do in Twitter is to start a tweet and just say, I'm listening to hash TJ Wow or TJ Wow is amazing. You don't have to say it's amazing. Um, you know, something like that. Just, just to get going and get involved in that conversation. So if you haven't already, I'm really encouraging you to give that a go and you will have our full loving, hugging support around that. Okay, let's go into our last comment question and we'll have some really quick responses from Stephanie, then Fiona, then Margaret before we go into a reflection piece. So we're going to be reflecting in a moment. Uh, and John has also shared a link to a social media article that's on Training Journal, almost as if we planned some social media stuff um, on the website to coincide with today. So our last comment is actually something that uh, Mike put in the chat a little bit earlier on, uh, the, towards uh, the kind of the beginning third of the session. He said, we're talking about how people use social media at the moment. But how can it be used to support a learning experience? So we talked a bit about running it alongside a course that's been run. But I think the key po point, point that I want to pick up on here is what about people that don't use social media that much or at all? Are they excluded from this? Are they going to miss out on something? Do we Should we do something a different way? Should we social media? What are your quick thoughts? So my husband does not have a mobile phone. I'm just going to put that out there. So I live with this all the time. <laughs> so he's not on any social media whatsoever. So it, I have to say it's in the forefront of my mind. And also we talk about um, bring your own device and all those sorts of things, which for some people I think that's a bit of a big ask, to be honest. So um, as with anything, well, you need to understand your audience. If, if I felt that... Um, the people that we were working with weren't going to be on social media that much or at all, then I probably wouldn't include it in the blend. You'd need to get the balance. For those where the majority are, but not everyone, then I ask people to buddy up. So maybe they can do things together. Maybe you can get a buddy who can share things with somebody. Um, but emailing is an option. Uh, and also using uh, desktop platforms is an option. So I mentioned LinkedIn groups earlier, things that you can get on a desktop. Um, to encourage people to join in a community or a chat. Thank you very much. I'd had to do that pause whilst I unmuted too, because I was typing um, away there. Uh, so Fiona, your quick so thoughts on this one, that. then we'll go to um, Margaret. Plus, I think it's the find out why. So what, what, um, what's the block or the barrier, if it is a block or a barrier? Um, and work with that and I think be prepared so in my design I always be prepared to build in time to sit with people and help them to try it out test it and actually suggest that part of the learning will be trying something new and that could be learning in that space and it doesn't have to be the whole duration of a program say on a manager's program it could just be they could pick a month where they engage with it and see what happens um, so it hopefully it doesn't feel too onerous Yeah, I, I think supporting people, helping people, demonstrating perhaps on, on screen Absolutely. if you have the face-to-face -face opportunity, and Margaret, your thoughts you don't on this. always let people see it, let people see the value. It can be hard to get people started. Um, I have some, some of my colleagues are not particularly social media interested or savvy, so I do actually email stuff I find on Twitter regularly around to the team and say, I found this interesting article or somebody just tweeted about something you did yesterday and you won't have seen it, so let me share it. So I will make the effort to share, partly because I'm hoping they will then see the value of being part of that when they start to see the sort of resources and interaction that is possible on Twitter. So it's gently encouraging. There was a time in the first few years I was very evangelical and really trying to get everybody on, but I've realized over time that it takes time to get it if you're new to it. So slowly building, slowly helping people see the value. I wouldn't at this stage build a program where it was essential. 
uh, until I'm more confident that people have either got access through devices, because I do think that is still a bit of a barrier in some organisations as well, or have the confidence or the interest in getting involved. So slowly encourage, share, show them the way, show them what great stuff there is out there and what they might be missing out on. Brilliant. Thank you for your sage words, everybody. Uh, what we're going to do now is move into a short reflection piece. Now, our speakers, Margaret, Fiona and Stephanie, they are definitely staying here. Don't worry. Uh, but we are going to go off of webcam. So let's just wave a, a visual goodbye, even though they're still going to be here, I promise. And let's move into our reflection point, because we need to think about, well, what are we going to do after this? Let's have a quick practice of our T text tool. So on the screen, on the left-hand side, what you should be able to see is a T. And if you click on the T tool, you should then be able to click on the screen, type your name, click again, and it will reveal your writing to everyone. So let's go and try that. Use the T text tool, and then go and click on the screen, type your name, click again, and it will share your writing. Ah, oh, awesome, everybody. Now, if you happen to type over someone, don't worry. The very first tool in your toolbox will allow you to pick up your name and move it around. Let's give that a very quick try. Ah, oh, looking good, everyone. If you've done typos, we've got a whole, whole thing in the chat window about typos. We don't worry about typos and things when we're doing this live. Okay, so we've had a practice with this. Don't worry, you can use the chat window if you want to, if this isn't working. Let's go and ask this question. What's your action point from today? What is it that you are going to do after today? Is it that you're going to use Twitter a bit more? Is it that you're going to design something into your learning? Is it that you're going to investigate different platforms? Maybe you've never heard of Slack and you think, well, let's give that a go. Is it that you're going to read the article that John shared earlier on? So some of the things that you guys are going to be doing after today's session, don't worry if you've typed over someone, we can move your writing around, it's not a problem. You're doing great at this, guys. If you're thinking, oh no, I've written something wrong, you can double click your writing and edit it, or you can hit return in the middle to make it like wrap like a typewriter, no problem at all. Let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, have a look at those uh, have not heard, so presumably that's platforms that you haven't heard of. Look at some of the other social media tools I haven't explored yet, like Slack and Yammer. Focus engagement to individuals and use hashtags, lovely. Uh, research how social can complement our classroom training, liking that, because it gives it that extra bit of value. Ask more questions whilst I'm reflecting, so I'm more involved in the conversation. That's a great point. Consider how and when to use social media more effectively. And that's the key, isn't it? It's having the goal. It's being effective. Uh, investigating Slack and consider using Facebook professionally. Joe has a great Facebook group on virtual learning worth starting there. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I think my uh, business operations manager is online, so he'll share the link for that in the chat window and on Twitter. Uh, somebody says here, I'm going to use a poll on Facebook Workplace to get insight about learners' needs and wants. That's awesome. Do share perhaps a screen grab or something on Twitter with hash TJWOW so that you can tell us a little bit more about that and what was successful or how you did it. Or just share that in um, on Twitter. Or we've also got the training journal forum. You could use that if you wanted to. Uh, I'm trying to write TJ Wow with my mouse, and that is really not working very well, is it? No, don't do that, everybody. That's a bad idea. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Integrate social media as part of the blended learning offer. Love that. Put dedicated time in my diary to manage my Twitter account and read the articles. I think that's a really great time. I've got that advice from Itinan Caro recently about LinkedIn. Have I done it yet? 
not yet. Will I do it next year? Let's give that a go. And somebody's doing a much better version of TJ Wow than I could. Thank you, whoever that is. Uh, and at the bottom, continue to enhance my own social media skills so that I can perhaps start to use in my own training and start to develop digital literacy within the organization. That is an awesome list there uh, of what people are doing. Uh, and Mike says, welcome. My mouse skills are OK. Oh, that was you, Mike. Oh, brilliant. So yeah, your mouse skills are definitely good there, Mike. Thanks very much. Uh, let's hear from Fiona, Margaret, and Stephanie as a bit of a wrap up of, of today's conversation and what you're seeing here on the action points. Fiona, first of all, there's lots of good stuff here. What are you thinking? There's loads of really good stuff. And I love that everyone's found that they're really up trying something new or just kind of persevering. Um, it's definitely worth it. And um, it's definitely worth just trying it. And I think, like um, we've said already, you know, if it's part of a learning program, don't make it the centre of your learning program, but add it on so that people can, over time, find, see the value, find the value. Um, and I'm always happy to talk about this stuff. So if anybody wants to DM me on Twitter or drop me an email, um, then I'm more than happy to chat. Um, because I know we're talking about technology. And often we're sitting with our own devices doing our own thing. But that doesn't mean we can't get together and have a coffee and, and look at it and kind of problem solve, you know, in a small group. So I'd be totally up for doing that. That is absolutely brilliant, Fiona. Thank you so much for that generous offer. And Fiona's details are in the chat window. You can just click on those links. And Margaret, what are your thoughts? I, I think it's really encouraging to see how many people are going to have a look, learn more, get involved. Um, and Fiona's a really good example of somebody who will be very encouraging and supportive. Absolutely. My my experience of the whole learning and development community, HR community generally, is people are very supportive and encouraging. And I would say just, just get in there and have a go, try things um, in the same way that we might be brave enough at a networking event to just go up to someone and say, hi, how are you? Just try it and see what comes back. I've also tweeted that I'm very happy to help anybody uh, with any of the tools that we've talked about today that I can. So ask us. We're, we're out and about on social media. And I know all, all four of us, including you, Joe, will very happily encourage people to get involved in a conversation. So have a go try it. We're here. But very encouraging to see how many people are, are keen to get in there and do a bit more with it. Good luck, everyone. Thank you, Margaret. Very generous, as always. And then, Stephanie, what are your final thoughts on, on the conversation and what you're seeing here? I think um, it's encouraging to see so many people um, considering how they can use it and lots of people who have had really great experiences with it. I think the tide has turned, really. I think more people can see the benefits than can't. And I think it's more about human beings at the end of the day who care about what people think about them and care about their own reputation. And I think the friendliness on social media that we all can give people to say, you're OK, and we can help you, um, we'll just help that. So I think we need to remember there are human beings at the end of this who have genuine concerns. And um, put that hand of friendship out there. It is a very, very friendly place. And as the others have said, we're all happy to help um, and share our own personal experiences. That's not to say a good plan. Um, Working with somebody who knows some of the pitfalls so that you can address them in your plan isn't a brilliant idea. It's not all lovey-dovey. Um, but um, as we've discovered today, there are steps you can take to make it a really valuable, worthwhile addition to your own learning and also to any um, learning solution that you're putting together, any blend you want to deliver. That's brilliant, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our, uh, our speakers today, to Fiona, Stephanie, and Margaret. I've shared all of their details in the in the chat window there. Absolutely great to have them with us. And thank you so much for everybody for attending as well. Now, we have a training general survey going out. So please go and click on that link. It's to tell us what do you like about the magazine, the online magazine, the webinars, the website, the podcast that we do, what media do you like, what stories do you want? Just tell us how amazing are we, but also tell us how can we be better. We can't be perfectly, wonderfully amazing. I'm sure there are things 
that we could do that will help you out. So please do go and click on that. And John's saying, do it, do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So thank you to our speakers. You know the sessions will be available on the Training Journal website, so you can go and look at the recording of this. Um, I would like to say later today, but <clears throat> when John gets around to doing it, it will be up very soon, I promise. And continue that conversation on TJ Wow. Make sure you get involved. If you haven't done a tweet yet, just do a little one. Just have a cheeky toe in the water. Now, our next webinar, it's going to be the Christmas webinar. Lots of L&D fun, lots of games. Come and have a play with that. Uh, so we really look forward to a nice kind of way of ending the year with you. Have a little bit of fun. That's on the 21st of December, 10 a.m. UK time. Please do come along. Continue that conversation. We might ask for some like Christmas jumper kind of pictures or silly pictures of you in, in Christmas hats. Anything along those lines. I'm also sharing some of the training journal details uh, so you can get in contact with us any time on this. So thank you very much, everybody. Everybody in the chat, you have done a marvellous job today. If you haven't tweeted, if you haven't gone on LinkedIn and connected with us and made a comment or any other social media platform, do give it a go. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Hopefully, I'll see you in not too long and we'll have a Christmas party. Thank you, everybody. And goodbye.